Hi, and welcome to another episode of ALS Caregiving Strategies. Today I'm going to be talking about healers and alternative therapies. This is really something that I guess uh, you should go with your gut about, but I clearly have a soapbox to stand on. And I actually think that there's a lot of complexities to the sort of cottage industry of healing, alternative healing. Um, and very little guidance. Obviously, there's there's no kind of um, governing framework for a lot of these systems. So it's difficult to vet, and, and people will take advantage of vulnerable situations. It's definitely happened to our family. Um, and I just wanted to share some of our experience with the various people who have come in and, out of, uh, in and out of our lives. So just to be totally clear, I'm not some super, super cavalier um, you know, only Western biomedicine works. I really am quite cynical about it, honestly. I think neurodegeneration is a perfect example of how toothless Western medicine can be in the face of, uh, you know, symptoms and, and diseases that affect millions and millions of people. You know, I'm not sure that the model we've been given, that we've inherited, will ultimately be the most effective. And I think many cases we're coming up against that. You know, 80% of doctor's visits are for medically unexplained syndromes. It's this sort of quiet wave sweeping um, the Western world. So I am all for treatments that are outside of um, that realm of practice and which have been around for an extraordinarily long time in which brilliant people have spent their lives um, perfecting, mastering, and articulating clearly. So that's just to say that though a lot of the bite of this video will come from me having criticisms for various alternative therapists. I really am a believer. Um, and indeed, in the 32 recorded cases of people who have had spontaneous symptom um, reversal in ALS, 32 that I know of, I know, I've spoken to a couple of doctors and there's sort of these famous 32 cases, a great number of them had something to do with these alternative treatments. I think eight of them were meditators. Um, and claimed that their meditative practice really helped reverse symptoms. So, um, you know, and again, and those, and those um, you know, I'm, I'm a meditator too, so it is important to me, and I probably have an internal bias towards believing in those systems. Um, that said, I think that there's also this sort of fundamental blame that goes into a lot of alternative treatments, a lot of alternative therapies. It's something I've encountered really explicitly, but... There's this sense I often get that it's like, if you'd lived your life differently, you know, if you'd consumed less heavy metals or exercise more is the most common one, you wouldn't have gotten this. And now we can kind of reverse these trends in your body. And I, I think that's actually quite hateful in, in a lot of ways because it can really make the, the patient feel very bad. And it's important to have a sense of onus and, and will in the face of your disease progression. I, I know that's very important for my mom, but some of the people who have come in have this very blame they're very blamey you know they can really blame the patient and and if you're not sort of doing your homework you know you haven't done the foot rub with the special cream that i created how could you expect to get better um i think that's quite emotionally taxing actually i think it was quite emotionally taxing for my mom so starting off i think that there's actually kind of three different types of alternative healers and i'm sure a lot of people will disagree with me, but this is just my personal opinion and my personal experience. There's people who are well within a um, systematized, well-documented framework. Um, and they have been trained by people who understand it and they, they implement it effectively on the basis of their prior knowledge. So I'm talking about acupuncturists, um, certain Reiki specialists, Ayurvedic medicine. These are individuals who have probably studied a lot and have a specific framework that came from someone somewhere outside of themselves. There have been hypotheses tested, um, and so there's a certain semblance of, of a government around these people. Um, say what you will about the efficacy of these various treatments. We had an acupuncturist who came and spoke with my mom, who did a, a quite good job, I think. It made her, her pain go down. Um, we had someone who did something kind of like Reiki, wasn't very effective. We've had a couple, these sort of, I don't know where I would classify these people, but, um, kind of like physical therapists, someone who came in and wanted to do like some specific shock therapy, although she's in a, a later category. These are individuals who, um, can back up what they're saying with a specific systematized language, um, and ideally could provide some kind of credentials as to their experience. Um, and then there are people who are outside of the norms completely. 
Um, so these might be individuals like psychics. And we have a psychic who's come who's actually lovely. Um, doesn't charge my family anything and is a really wonderful healer and I think makes my mom very happy and, and feel a bit better. Um, these are individuals who might be, uh, their, their system is, is a lot more numinous and abstract. Um, so it might be difficult to vet and honestly with that kind of thing you just need to rely on your gut. If you have a good feeling about them, if they're not trying to charge you thousands of dollars, maybe it's worth a try. You know, I think that there are a lot of people who can bring a lot into your life. Um, and then there are people who are within a system that doesn't actually exist. Generally, it's something they created themselves. So I think that we all worship science. I think that, you know, is, is the language we use uh, around science is akin to the language people used around religion back in the day. And so a lot of people use it as their ex explanatory vehicle, even when there's very little fundamental proof. So I've had a great number of people come in who claim to sort of have a deep understanding of vasculature. You know, it's all about the lymphatic system and heavy metals have been stuck in your lymph nodes and we just have to move it with quantum mechanics. I'm so, I swear to God, this is stuff people have said. Um, I think that's actually quite... That, that to me, and I'm biased because I, um, I, I work in science, so I, I take it super seriously and I like think about the language a lot. I think that's a big red flag. It's when someone has their own system that they've created, they've explored on their own. Um, and generally speaking, those are the people who claim that they can cure ALS. That actually all diseases are the same thing is a very common statement they make. You know, everything is about flow in the body. So these are concepts taken from other schools of thought and then sort of brought forward with um, scientific language. So, you know, I was away from my house for a while and there was a healer who came in who claimed he could remyelinate my mom's neurons. And that's what he was doing. You know, the inflammation was out of whack. And so he was remyelinating it. And, you know, for my mom, my sister and my father, who don't have a great deal of experience with science, that sounds very legitimate. And so we kind of put forward this false sense of security with this individual. Um, and he was, he was really the most damaging person we dealt with um, because he charged exorbitant amounts of money. And he had all this proof to back it up and these videos of people. And it's so easy now as I'm sitting here to be like, how could we have fallen for this individual? How could my parents who are super smart fall for this guy? But people understand that vulnerability makes you ready to see and believe anything, you know? And that's, that's really what happened with him. And he, I do believe, helped my mom a bit. You know, I think that he had some kind of talent in something, but he was, for all intents and purposes, like a shyster, you know? He really took a lot of money from us, and he egged my mom on. He was like, oh my god, we're doing this, we just accomplished this, her finger's moving so much better, it's th this much more effective. And of course, you know, when something didn't work, it was not our fault, it was his, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't his fault, it was our fault. You know, he came in the room one time and he's like, she's not wearing socks? How could she not be wearing socks? You're trying to kill her? And so, you know, when you're in a situation where you can't do anything for someone, a statement like that is in some ways quite appealing. Because you're like, oh, of course, she's not wearing socks. That's why she was sick last night. You know, there's, there's a system at play. And one of the terrifying things about ALS for me is that there's really no system. There's very little system. You can, you can describe the symptom progression. You can understand to a certain extent what's going on, but... There's no clarity. There's no, there's no through line. And Western medicine, at least, is straight up about that. People have ideas about different treatments. And, you know, my mom, for example. Um, and I say this if you're, if you're planning on getting this treatment. Some people, have, it's worked for them, but other people it hasn't. You know, she got this, like, s experimental stem cell treatment that is, is sweeping the nation. There's a couple different groups that have clinical trials with it. Did nothing for her. It was a huge investment of time and energy for us. And... She got zero benefit from it. And this Russian dude did give her some benefit. Um, so there is, there is something to be said for things. But the point I was trying to make is that um, Western medicine is at least very honest. They will tell you about their options uh, and they will give you some kind of straightforward sense for what you can expect. A lot of other people who will come into your life will give you false expectations. And hope is extraordinarily expensive. That's something I've learned from all these healers. It's so easy. It's so beautiful and nice to feel that there's, you know, hope from this individual. 
Um, and ho- it's important. It's important to feel hope too, but it's very, very expensive. And when someone's charging you for it, it's not real. So my sort of rules of thumb are stay away from people in the third group, people who very quick to explain what's happening with science because science doesn't know anything about this. They're using scientific language. They're probably using it wrong. I can say the words influence. And like people know some stuff. A lot of really smart, wonderful people are working on these questions. But anyone who can confidently tell you ALS is about, you know, glucose metabolism problems caused by, uh, you know, your vasculature shifts, which can be exacerbated by genes. They're just talking out of their ass. They don't know. They don't know what they're talking about. And this person probably doesn't either. Um, it's just easy to be convinced and easy to seek it. So people in that group, so, uh, we have one, one healer who I, I don't talk to her about what she thinks is going on because I'm unreasonable and, and prejudiced against her perspective. Um, she does a great job. She works very hard. She's very sweet and wonderful and does great for my mom. She really helps her to sleep. Um, every other version of that has been very negative. People who charge you money, you know, there, there are very reasonable rates for these things and people need to make a living, of course, and they should. And if they do a good job, you should, you should pay them. People who are trying to charge you exorbitant fees, just reconsider. There's no reason for it to, you know, you should have, you shouldn't have to suffer a huge deal. And this is unreasonable too, but a lot of the really effective healers I've met do it for free. They do it because they, they love it and because they want to help. I've met a couple people like that and they've always been the best and go with your gut. You know, when I first met this Russian dude, I had such a bad feeling about him. I really did. I was like, cankers. I was like, this dude is bad news. And he was ultimately, but I, I sort of like sat on it because my mom was so excited. You know, she really felt it. She wanted to get better. Yeah. So those two things are something to watch out for and, and they will come. You know, it, it is, it surprised me. Maybe it's just that my family was, was looking for other things. My family has maybe more resources than other individuals, but they came to us a lot. And it's very difficult to navigate your own care and your own feelings in the face of all these people who undoubtedly give you a ton of opinions. Gotta eat seaweed. Oh, no heavy metals. No, oh my God, you have that kind of plant in your house? You don't have socks on? Of course you're going to kill her. That, that weighs a lot on the family. It's just another voice in this kind of chaos pit. It's very difficult to find peace and centeredness in the face of all that. So I guess that's all I really had to say about it. Um, Again, I I hope I haven't been too negative and (laughs) maybe emotional. Maybe this is just like a therapy session for me. But it was very surprising, very, very surprising for me how many of these people came forward um, when my mom first got ill. You know, you don't even know these worlds exist and you're ready to believe anything. Um, So again, I'll include my email in the description of the video. If you have any questions about anyone or you want suggestions, I don't want to give people's names out on this, but if you're in the Los Angeles area, I can give you a couple really wonderful people um, who who may be able to help your loved one um, or you. Okay, thanks for listening. Hope you have a great day.